Hey gang, and welcome to another exciting episode of Zoology Online. And today we're going to talk about phylum platyhelminthes. So, what is what are platyhelminthes? Well, platy means flat, and helminth means worm. So these are actually going to be our flatworms. And there's a lot of cool things going on with flatworms, and a lot of gross things going on with flatworms. And we're going to go through it all together. So first thing you need to know about flatworms is that they're generally always found in in water, either fresh or marine. Uh, sometimes they can be found in soil, but it's got to be damp soil. One of the evolutionary features that they have that separates them uh, as kind of like a, the next step in, in a more advanced uh, uh, type of organism is that they actually have three different layers of tissue, three different germ layers. Uh, we call these triploblastic. So if you remember, nadarians were only diploblastic. Um, they had an exoderm, and an endoderm and the mesoglea in between, which is not, you know, the in, in between part was almost all water, it's like 95% water. Well, with these guys, we're going to have three separate layers. Um, they are bilateral and they are acelomates, uh, meaning that they do not have a body cavity that, that surrounds their organs. Um, uh, they do only have one uh, opening, that so their mouth and their anus are the same thing. What goes in that opening will also be will come back out. Um, they do have cephalization, which is not something we clearly saw in, in the Darians. Uh, these actually have a defined head. Um, and usually a lot of their sensory organs uh, and features will be located on that head. Um, so before with uh, the um, Nadarians, we did see that they had a little bit of a, a muscle system, but they didn't really have any other type of systems. A lot of the, their processes were just cellular uh, diffusion to, to, to do most of the intake of uh, nutrients and, and, uh, and, and oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide and get rid of cellular waste. Uh, but when we look at platyamenthes, we actually see a big bump. We actually are going to see a, a nervous system, an excretory system, and a muscle system all together in this one, in, in these, in this one organism, essentially. Um, so they can be free living, but a good portion of them are parasitic. And we'll talk about the parasitic ones, and there's a, a lot of detail that we'll put into the parasitic ones because it is a rather uh, robust group, and a lot of those parasites, uh, parasitic flatworms, actually affect humans. So we actually know a lot about some of those species. So we'll look at those. Um, their size range can go as small as one millimeter all the way up to 75 feet, so 25 meters in length. So they can be a pretty vast range of them. And again, like over 34,000 species that we know of uh, today. And uh, you can see on here, here's some flatworms. Here's another flatworm. Here's some other flatworms. There's a really pretty flatworm. Um, but yeah, flatworms are pretty diverse. So let's talk about the, what I mentioned earlier, they are diplo, excuse me, triploblastic. So they're acelomates with no body cavity, but they have an ectoderm, the outer part. They have an endoderm, which is the inner lining. And then they have a mesoderm, which is all the stuff in the middle. Now, their middle, where we had the uh, mesoglea before, in flatworms, we'll have something called the parenchyma. It's just loose tissue that's on the inside. Uh, it kind of acts as like a rigid support system. Uh, that surrounds the tissue, the, the, the tissue that surrounds their uh, their body uh, uh, and their their organs on the inside, uh, and it's just thought to add like basically almost like a, like a, a rudimentary skeletal system, just adding some structure and stiffness to their body. Um, so. Like we mentioned earlier, that they they do have a nervous system, and how do we know it's a nervous system and not just a neural net? Well, they actually have a little brain. It's called a cerebral ganglia, um, and it just means little brain, and that is located at the at the anterior part of their body. So now we start having a head region, because up there with that cerebral ganglia, we also find some other things like an ocelli, which are eye spots, and there's things called oracles, which are the little loopy parts on the side, at least on this species head. Um, they have that kind of like acts like a cat's whiskers and helps them sense their environment around them. So we have a lot of sensory information going on with the head, so they do sort of, sort of cephalization. Um, now, from the cerebral ganglia running down the length of the body, you have longitudinal nerves. Um, and then it, it's not shown in this particular picture, it'll be shown later on in another diagram, but there are nerves, nerves that run across the width of the body, and those are actually the transverse nerves. Uh, but altogether, those nerves help coordinate the movement and and uh, of the of the organism. And we did not see this uh, this type of coordination in the nadarians because they they simply lacked a cerebral a cerebral ganglia. 
So some other feeding methods. So again, uh, the ones that are free living tend to be either carnivores, they can also be herbivores, and they can be scavengers. They can pretty much be anything. If they're if they're carnivores, obviously probably like detritus. Maybe even eat like uh, like zooplankton. Um, the uh, scavengers eat things that have that have died and broken down, uh, and they'll help pick, pick at uh, the, the, the corpse of other organisms and help break it apart, which is an important function in the ecosystem. And then some that are herbivores will actually eat just photosynthetic plankton and algae. Um, we do have parasitic ones, though. Uh, when they're parasitic, they're obviously going to have to live on a host. And when we start getting into the parasitic uh, flatworms, uh, they become more increasingly specialized. And so there's a little bit more to learn about their bodies and how they operate because if you live inside of a digestive tract, you don't really need a digestive tract. You live inside of one. So we'll get to that when we get to, uh, when we get to that. So carrying on with some of their, their, their functions, the, uh, another big thing, that a system that we see is an excretory system. We've never seen this before in, the, uh, in, in sponges or in endarians because diffusion of cellular waste well, cellular waste just diffuses out, so it, it, it didn't need a system to pump it out. But with these body plans, the, uh, even though it, with it being really thin, a, a flatworm is flat. The idea behind it, that um, the worm being flat, means that the cells in the middle are never too far away from an outside surface. So that way diffusion can still occur. So yes, they still rely on diffusion uh, for getting O2 in, for getting CO2 out and cellular waste out. Um, but some of the cells that are deeper inside of the body actually need a little assistance. And this is where we see the evolution of a, a rudimentary excretory system occur. And the big cells that we have here are called flame cells. And essentially, they're these little cells. Um, they have a bunch of flagella on the, excuse me, cilia on the inside that uh, actually flicker and cause a current. And as that current pumps, it, it pulls the uh, nitrogen waste out of the cells and pumps it down a series of tubes and out into the surrounding environment. So it essentially acts as a, um, a uh, um, um, excretory system. So it's really cool. Um, again, they, like I said earlier, they do use diffusion though uh, to most of the external cells. Uh, some of the ones deeper in need that extra little help. So respiration, circulatory, and ex uh, um, uh, excretion uh, uh, still rely on diffusion to some degree.